Good evening, all of you. Hope you had a great weekend. We'll just wait for a minute or two for more people to join, and then we will start. In a minute, I will start with a recap of Aries, which we saw last week, that is the previous class. So by the time we complete it, we would be able to, other participants would be there and we will be able to go ahead. Right, uh, on today's agenda, I have uh, for each, we have seen how to use a for loop to show you how to use for each and then we are going to understand how to work on a class and objects, and we are going to write our own methods and we're going to work on the methods. Right? Now let's start with for each loop. Let's go back to the array and work from it. We wrote this array last class in the last session that we did. So you can see here is an integer array of marks and it takes these five arguments and we have always traditionally been using this for each loop to work with this to either get the values or you know display the values, we use a for loop. And now I'm going to show you the for each loop which is also called by a name called enhanced for loop. How do we use a for each loop? For each loop is so simple that you don't have to give the iteration. You can declare your variable and start with that. Now, what should we know while we use a for each loop? You should know the name of your array or name of your collection and the data type. Now, what is the data type here? It is of integer data type. So what should you do here? You need to go create a variable of the type integer. So for int, Say I call it item for int item in use the keyword in marks. So how do we this basically is read like this for each item in marks. So one by one, that is the meaning of this one. I repeat when I write this one, the meaning of this line is that for each item in the collection marks. So in the array marks, one by one, I am fetching the value. So whatever you want to do with the value, you can add it or you can multiply it or whatever you want, you can do. I'm just writing a console dot right line off. What should I write? Normally, you know, in a for loop, you say marks of i or marks of j here. All you need to do is print your item because already you have retrieved the item and stored it in an integer variable. So you can right away print the item. Now let me go ahead and execute this. Now it should write all the values for this. Does it sound simple? So for each loop is very, very simple that you don't have to use an initialization, a condition and an iteration, just like that simply you can put it. Now where all will you use for each loop? Wherever you do not know the size, you don't know. You don't know the size, then you can basically go for um, uh, uh, for each loop and also where you know you you don't know what type you can use an object type and get it I'll come to that in a bit so this is as simple as a for each loop now what we would do is right away we will go to a two-dimensional array let's work on a very simple two-dimensional uh, array let's assume the same uh, marks thing uh, for let's assume that you know you're going to have it for uh, two semesters and five subjects that's the criteria for the two-dimensional array so let's have the integer array and i told you the other day that you will have a comma inside it so i'm just going to call it as okay um, the marks we have once so i'm going to call it as subjects is equal to new int and we have to mention I said two semesters and five subjects so this is how we are going to have it and uh, we'll leave it here now let me write a, a int um, you know nested for loop and I receive the value here so let me just go for an int uh, for loop for now we are going to receive the value so we'll ask the end user to enter the value we will now store the value so the current loop that we are going to write is for storing the value store the value right so for 
int i is equal to zero i is less than it's two so two and it is i plus plus now what are we going to do we are going to have a for another loop here because it is a matrix type right so now we would be on the first row we have to get each one of the element from the first row so i'm going to say for int j is equal to zero j is less than five and it is j plus plus now we need to get the value and store it here so where are we going to store we are going to store it in subject subjects uh, of i comma j so initially i would be zero j would be zero so that's the first position then it will be like uh, i will remain zero j will become one two three four then i will become one one then j will be one comma zero one comma one likewise we do so i'm writing in this whole thing here convert uh, to in 32 of uh, console dot read line okay so this portion is done now for ease of use i am going to copy oops control c and control v before this i will also write line console dot right line result okay so that we will be able to see it in a separate way now this is going to be in a different pattern this is not read line it has to be write so i'm going to write a console dot write off because i want it in a single row i'm saying write off and i'm going to say slash t or at the end i can have a slash t okay and once a row is done i want it to take it to a next line so console dot write line off okay so now shall we execute i will repeat the program for you so i have a two dimensional array here and in the two dimensional array we have it is 2 comma 5 that means two semesters and five subjects and i'm going to comment line the earlier things so that when you look at the results we would have the clarity so with this let me now execute oops i haven't given the value so we need to give the value say i will give 12 13 14 15 6 7 then i will give it a 67 78 89 90 and one more mark 87 then execute can you see it so the first semester it's like this you didn't study well and in the sem okay sorry i started with 12 so it went and the last value is missing probably because of corona the exam is cancelled so it's a zero value now do we get the two dimensional array it's very very simple to work with a two dimensional array here right so if you just understand how this nested loop thing works it's easier for us now someone asked me the other day it's about this question so i'm just going to go to another array which has got multiple you know uh, multiple arrays and a collection of multiple arrays but of different size so i'm just going to go and create a new i have already written on this program so i'm just bringing it here for you so that it's easy for me to finish it off what is it that we are going to see the one that we are going to see is called jag array what is it a jag array a jag array is an array within an array okay so it can have multiple array now if you look at this i have taken an example of a patient's waiting list so string double square bracket patient a new string of three so here the idea is i basically have three queues probably let's understand that patients are waiting so let's say that this is a patient waiting queue i have three queues and always you know that all the queues are not equally filled each queue has got different items now please look at this 
This is how you can declare a two dimensional say a jagged array. First, when you declare, you can say what is it. So I have declared it as a string array, string um, square bracket, square bracket, name is fat, and meaning patient, new string of three. So that means there are three queues. Now in queue number one, there are five patients. In queue number uh, two, that is one, we have two, and in queue number three, that is index number two, we have four members. Now, how do we go about entering the values? So first I start with I, I is equal to zero. The first one, each array, you have to write it separately. For I is equal to zero, I is less than five, you have to get the value and store the value. And I'm not using a J loop, you can see I've just marked it as zero comma I to store it here. So in zero comma I, I'm storing the value. Similarly, I go for the second array. There are only two elements, so I mark it as two here. And you can see one comma I. I have marked it as one comma I, and I'm storing the value here. And then you have the third array that has four elements, and I'm saying two comma I, and I'm storing the value. Similarly, I'm printing it also as zero comma I, and one comma I, and two comma I. Now to remember this, I'm gonna go ahead and um, give the values that we could easily understand. So the first one has five, I'm saying cat, a rat, a bat. Oh, that's a bad thing to mention now, mat and a pad. So these are the five things it goes. Then the second one comes and second one, I'm saying it as damn and a jam, two things. Fourth one comes, I have four things to say. I say sit, uh, bit, kid, fourth item. Fourth item is bit. Okay, so now let me execute this. So there are three arrays. Oh, I should have given a slash T so it prints it here. I hope it is visible for you. Cat, rat, bat, man, cat, bat, and the dam and the jam, and the sit, pit, kit, pit thing. So this is what is called as jagged array. Jagged array is something that uses the facility to have a collection which can contain multiple arrays, a collection of more number of arrays. And the best part is each array can be of a different size. Don't confuse this with a mattress. Mattress means all the rows are of the same size. Here it is not like that. So our first array has got five, the second array has two, and the third array has four. All right? I'll just pause it here for me to go on to the next thing to talk to you about. Today, I'm going to talk about um, a class and an object. So I'm again sharing my window here so that it is visible for you, so class and an object. What is a class? If I asked you, you would definitely give me the definition. So let me give you my way of understanding class. Class is a collection of common properties, behaviors, and activities. This is how simple way, because we always say real-time entity could be easily expressed and all that, right? So let's take it. What is this? See, let me say I have a class of students. So you're all there. All my students have some common property that they all attend the class. They have some common behavior that they are, they take some, you know, they uh, normally they come to a physical classroom. Now you're all connecting on your uh, application, the app, you go use a PC or someone use a laptop, some may use mobile and you're all connecting here. Right, activities. Students do uh, take notes, they go back and practice, they may use the online compiler. So when I say my class, all my students have this common property of coming to the class, uh, being in the class, attending the class, taking notes in the class. What is an object? An object is an individual representative of the class. That means it has got all the common properties and behaviors. So if I say my student comes to the class, this comes, they do it on online, it, it also does. Activities, yes, but in its own way. So some of you are very prompt in start coming to the session at four, some join a little late. Some of you are very obedient that you go home and practice, some of you do not. So this is what we call this individual property or individual value. Now, to understand this, let's write a program that will help us to understand a class and object. What happens with a class and object is class is like a template. So when I put a template, when, uh, when I create an object, I furnish values for the object and use it. So I'm not touching the template at all. The template will remain. 
Okay, uh, without confusing you much, I will write a program and then from there we will start to understand everything that we are going to see from now on would be based on the class and the object concept. So let me just remove this and uh, let me start here um, using system. Okay, now class, I'm going to call it as math because I'm going to write methods and from there we are going to start to understand. I'm going to have a public uh, static void main. This is our um, main method. Okay, right. Okay, now I'm going to write a method. So um, start with a very simple one, public void show. It's a simple method. It's going to show something. So I'm going to say console dot right line off. Uh, hi, um, I'm, I'm a simple method. Okay, so this is it. Now what is it? Now this class has a template that it has got a method. This is a member of the class. And what is happening here is that I'm not going to do anything with the class. Every time I want to call it, I will only go and create an object. So how do we create an object? Object is called as a user-defined data type. So how do you declare a data type? First, you will mention the data type and your variable name. Here you have to mention your class name and the variable name. I have the habit of always calling my object as OBJ, so I'm continuing. Okay, the only difference is that you will have a new operator. You will say it is equal to new met of. So what happens when I do this? When my program starts, it basically starts with the, this line, main, and it comes here. When it sees met object, it has to declare a variable of the type met. But when it sees this keyword new, it understands that it has to create an object of the type of met. So, you know, you can basically visualize like this. You're copying it. So, in the memory location, it will read and basically go and allocate space and call it by the name OBJ. Whatever there is there in the class. Suppose I have some class level variables, two, three other methods. All these will be taken as a copy from the class and populated in the object. And now whatever value you assign to the variable or the class, that will happen only in the object space and not on the class. Now, how do I call this method? If I want to now execute this method, how do I call? I call it as opj.show. When I call this, this is how this is going to work and execute. And yeah. I'm a simple method gets executed. Now I'm again going to go over. Now let's write it another method, public void. I'm going to call this method as sum. So in this method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have two variables in the num1, comma, num2. And I'm going to have a console dot uh, right line of num1 plus num2. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, how do I call? Again, you can see this, even if I don't call. Now, if I execute, the moment I come across this line, that is when my program starts, it comes across this line, it will allocate a memory. Memory, it is like a space, okay? So in the heap, it will go and allocate a space. When you allocate a space, you should know what should be the capacity. So it will read the class, it identifies that there is a sum method and there are two variables inside that. You need space for that. There is a show method, you need space for that. So with all that, it will create it and call that memory location by the name OBJ. Okay, so now, like I have called this obj.show, I can call this as obj.sum and it will get executed and it will which is the value it is getting executed on a uh, local variable. Oh, I haven't assigned value to it. Mm -hmm. Num1 is equal to this, and num2 is equal to this. Okay, okay, sorry, I was oversighted. Sorry. I jumped in. Okay, so it does this activity. It is a simple method. But normally, if you see, every time I want to give a different value and see how it works, I just go and declare it as a parameter or an argument. I want to pass it as an argument. So I say int 
num1 comma num2 i will pass this as an argument okay now i want to write this now in this case what happens this method when it copies itself in the object location it will say unless and otherwise you have these two arguments you won't be able to invoke this method let's execute and get a bad result and then come back so you can see here some take no some takes zero arguments that means we have to give value for it to execute let me give some random number here and execute this yes it will Oh, I haven't. Okay, I could have passed it on here. So, so, so. Okay, so it passes on that value. So, how does this program work? So, from the main, it would start. It will create an object. Object now, when it creates, it has to create space for the sum method, show method, and the whole memory space will be called by obj. And when we call obj dot sum, it takes. these two values puts it into the memory location and then does this addition and displays it for us is it clear this is creating an argument passing an argument now let's just take a simple example here i go ahead and i would have a class level variable let me call it as int var okay now int var if you want we can initialize or let's go do it in our class itself okay so now what i'm going to do is here i'm going to see it plus okay there is a local where i'm also adding that to this one so how do we do this now please look at this if i execute now it will say that it is uninitialized how do i initialize it here so i can call it as obj dot where is it equal to again i have to pass the value convert dot to int 32 of and console dot read line okay now the value will be passed right but still let me just execute here yeah Okay, so now you can see earlier it was one to one. Now I'm only initializing here, and you can see that I'm not passing it. It is not required. That is how it works in the memory. So now I would like to visualize like you have taken a carbon copy or Xerox copy of the class, but in the copy that you have made, you have assigned value for where. Now does it give you a picture? You have not initialized it in the class. In the class, there is no value for it. Obviously, if you print in the class, it would say it is zero. There is going to be no value here. But this value that we have assigned goes only through our program. Does it make sense? Right. We can also see it with some other program. Now this time around, I will make it very simple by writing. I let me have a public uh, void. Prod. I'm going to have a prod of int num one comma int num two. Okay, so probably we are going to multiply. That's the idea. Um, I can just take num one. I don't want num two. Okay. Now, 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 now. Console dot right line off. I'm going to say num one into. Okay. Now let let me again make this uh, simple here. Uh, yeah, sum of I'm going to say just a simple number so you can easily keep a track of it. Now I'm going to say obj dot prod of and prod needs just one value. Okay, I'm passing the four. So now let's execute this. Oh, I missed the semicolon here. Okay. Three, five, four. Why? Oh, okay. The three forty five has been taken. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for that. Let me just keep that as two. Okay. 
Okay, so now you know 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 2 is 11, 4 into 2 is 8, and that's what we get here. So it's very simple that you can have a class level variable, and when you create an object, your object will contain this value. Now let's see, always methods are not going to be void type, they're going to have return type. So suppose I have this as return type. Return type is what? What is the return type? It is the data type of the resultant value. Now when I add two integers, I'm obviously going to get integers. So my return type is going to be int. When I have a return type as integer, when I have uh, integer return type, Okay, so obviously the next thing that I need to show is I have to have a result, resultant value. I need to return something. So let me just have an integer re is, is equal to num1 plus num2 plus res, re, oops, plus 5. Okay. Now, when you receive the value, here again, you should have a variable in which you can store the value. So I'm going to call int, uh, int s is equal to this. And if I have to print this, I should have a console dot right line to print this value. I'm making a mistake here. Console dot right line to print the value that is s. Do we get that? So this is a return type. Let me execute it here. Uh, yeah, that is it. I forgot to mention this. I told you I didn't write this return res. So let me return an res. So it does that value and returns a value. So return type is the uh, data type of the resultant value. In .NET, in C Sharp, you can also use one more thing. I make this as void and what I can do is I can declare something called as out data type, out int res. Okay, so if I do it like that, I don't need it. So out is referring to the output value. Okay, and I don't even have to have this return statement. All the resultant will be stored in this res variable. And now when I pass on, I also have to, whenever I invoke, I have to invoke with s, so I will invoke it like this. And now let me print it. To avoid confusion, I'm going to put a comment line over here as well, right? Okay, now only our uh, sum method is working. Okay, so the key here is I have to call it with a key parameter that is a keyword out comma s, out space s, okay? Now you can see that it comes. So we can use a return type or else we can also use a out parameter and declare it. Does it add significance here? Now we can also have a static method. How does a static method work? The same thing can be converted into a static method. Now for clarity's sake, I'm, uh, I'll remove this one. Okay, so public static, or let this remain like this control. I will write a method here. So public static void addition add. Okay, right. Now, if I do this, what happens? Um, let me again say it is int num1, comma, int num2. Okay, so console dot right line of num1 plus num2. Okay, when you have a static method, what is the most important thing? You cannot create a copy of a static method. It refers only to a single memory location and you cannot create a copy. And how do you call it? You will call it only as like this. 
You can't create object dot add. Each object will not have a copy. Here you can call it only straight away like this. So now I'm just going to execute. Right, five comma eight becomes fifty. Now I'll just hold on here for the day because I just have five minutes. I just thought I will also do reference type, but I will wait for tomorrow to do the reference type. I would like to take your questions, please. I have been really, really fast, so I would prefer if you could ask any question. What we have seen is a class and an object, and we have seen simple methods to write methods. Okay, please post your question. You may please post your question. So a class, as we understand in simple terms, is like a collection of common properties and behavior. And an object is a, also an individual representative of a class, which has got all the common properties and behavior, but in, with its own value. Whatever value you populate in the current scope of the object, that is what will be available in the current one. And we started with the for each loop. I hope you can easily understand a for each loop. It's very similar to the for loop that we use, but there is no initialization, no incrementation. It is right away you create a variable of the type of your collection and map your collection and you can use it. We've seen how to write a two-dimensional array and we have seen how to work on a jagged array. A jagged array is a collection of multiple arrays where each array can be of different size, different length. We started writing our methods. It's very simple to write method. The methods always have this pattern that you specify the access specifier, the return type, and the name of the method can be anything under the sky followed by parentheses. Inside your method, whatever content you want, you can write it. Normally in a class, when you work with it, you have to create an object to access the method. When you create an object, what happens? It allocates a memory of the same size of your class with all the members in your class and calls it by the name that you have given. Where does it create it? In the runtime memory. When you execute an application, the application is called the process. The running application is called a process. This process occupies a memory. That memory is called the heap. In the heap, it will go and allocate memory. By default, now for this kind of a program, it should allocate 16 bytes of memory. And then it will populate all that is declared in your class in that memory location and call it by the name. That is how every time when we say obj.show, obj.sum, it is able to call that method and bring the result. We have also seen how to write methods with parameters. We have seen how to have a class member and use it. And we have also seen how to have a return type. We have seen an out parameter. Started with the static parameter. So in case you have any question, you can. Thank you, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.